Hello and welcome to this uh, tutorial for 3D World magazine. My name is Anders Kjellberg and I run a company called Dog Day Design based in Sweden. This tutorial will show you uh, some of the features in uh, the new dynamic system for uh, Cinema 4D release 12. The final result will be not exactly like this animation that I will show you in a few seconds, but uh, roughly the same. We have a group of eight balls being ran by a box, and uh, let's scrub a little bit here. Being ran by a box, and the box comes to a stop. I call this the uh, Cinema 4D box. Don't know why. <laughs> uh, anyway, the box comes to a full stop. The cargo inside is being pushed out as you can see by a plate here and the lid jumps off as well spheres fall down bounce around a little bit and the animation stops completely uh, I should say that due to the very nature of dynamics you will get an animation looking like this but not exactly like this your spheres and eight balls will most definitely bounce around uh, different than my, than my does. But with that said, let's jump straight into Cinema 4D release 12. Okay, here we are in uh, Cinema 4D release 12. This is the uh, Dynamics uh, start scene. We have the box right here. We have uh, a group called Scene. Here, this is hidden for now, as uh, we don't really need it until uh, later on in the tutorial. But we have uh, a sky, we have a background, we have a floor, we have a basic three-point lighting, and uh, a light dome covering um, the whole scene for the final for the final animation. In this first stage, we're going to add connectors and hook those connectors up to the wheels, the front wheels and the back wheels. After that we will connect the wheels or rather the uh, connectors to a motor that will be uh, that will have the chassis right here as its anchor point. So it will the motor will drive the chassis and the wheels will spin with it. After that we will assign uh, some dynamics tags to various parts of the vehicle to make sure they all uh, behave and interact as expected and we will also in this stage animate the speed of the motor. So the ve vehicle will start roughly here, let's change to start roughly here and then roll away to about here and stop. Alright, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is to uh, change the gravity settings. For that we go to project edit, project settings and this is already set. Default I think is 1000. As you can see also I'm using uh, centimeters for this. You can you can use whatever unit you want, but uh, for this I'm using centimeters. So set gravity to three thousand, as we will be, as that will uh, help with this type of dynamics we do. With the gravity set uh, as we want it, let's start adding some uh, dynamic objects. So let's go up to the new simulation menu, dynamics, uh, connector, let's rotate the scene so we can see a connector here. Now we need to use the transfer function to transfer the position and rotation, uh, or rather it won't pick up the rotation but the, it will pick up the position of the back wheels. We 
because the connector needs to line up with the axis of the object it's uh, supposed to be supposed to be driving. So let's go to with the connector selector. Let's go to functions, transfer, and in this field here, transfer to just drag and drop the BW object uh, for back wheels and click apply. So you can see the connector jumps into place here but it's still the wrong direction so in the edge field type in 90 and apply to keep it tidy let's rename this connector right away connector BW then we know this connector hooks up to will hook up to the uh, back wheels so let's uh, create a copy of this one copy and paste let's rename this connector FW4 front wheel use the uh, transfer and instead of back wheel let's transfer it to front wheel click apply now you can see the we had the axis lined up already here. So uncheck rotation on the transfer tool. And everything will look just fine. Okay. Now select the two connectors and make them a child of the wheels group. Then select connector back wheel as we're going to hook up the back wheels to this connector now. Now in the attributes manager you have uh, several tabs so in the object tab make sure the type is set to hinge it's the default setting so you should be okay there. Now drag and drop the object hypernerbs back wheel into this field object, object A then select the chassis and drag that into object B, like so. Then select the connector uh, FW and repeat the process, but here we'll drag hypernerbs FW and chassis to object B here as well. Now select the hypernerbs, hypernerbs back wheel and add a Simulation, Dynamics, Create Rigid Body. So select Hypernobs Front Wheel, Simulation, Dynamics, Rigid Body. Let's close those two. Now we have the two connectors in place. One for the back wheels and one for the front wheels. But we need something to drive the vehicle and for that we will add a simulation dynamics motor. Place the motor as a child of chassis like so and uh, in the motors attribute manager you can leave type uh, to angular that's perfectly fine for what we we are about to do here. You have two field object A and uh, object B so let's drag the hypernerbs back wheels into object A and the chassis into object B. We also need to rotate the motor 90 degrees on H. Click apply. This will make sure the motor drives the wheels in the correct direction. Now select the chassis in the object manager and add a simulation dynamics create rigid body. Like that and press play. Just force down. You can see the wheels spinning. The back wheels are moving. Yay, success. But we need a ground plane 
for this vehicle to drive on. So let's open up the group, uh, scene group. We have a floor already in place here. Let's use the traffic lights to unhide it. Quick render will show that we have sort of ground plane here. So let's make this ground plane uh, dynamic. We do that by having it selected and simulation, dynamics, create collider. You can also add a just right click on an object and add a dynamics body and in this tag you can then set whatever type of dynamics tag you need be it, be it a rigid body, collider, ghost collider, whatever you need uh, but for this tutorial we're going to use the menus up here simulation dynamics create collider right now we have a collider let's see what happens if we press play and the box is driving away. That's excellent. Before we continue we are going to check out the wheels here. They're spinning pretty good here. But what we are going to do is change the bounce and friction. So let's shift click so select them both, these two tags on the wheels and on collision and on collision, uh, the collision tab here lower bounce to zero and whoops, zero and increase friction to 170 now the wheels are getting a much firm a grip on the ground as it drives away. Time to adjust the motor. We'll select the motor and in the attributes manager we have angular target speed. Let's lower that to 500. And let's increase torque to 100. Angular target speed 500 and torque 100 should be enough. Uh, you can see it's it's a bit quicker in the start now. That's exactly what we want. So now we have the C4D box uh, driving away. So let's make it stop as well. Let's scrub to frame 100. You can also type in 100 enter like so and uh, add a keyframe for angular target speed and you can do that by right clicking animation add keyframe or a quick way just control and click on the little square uh, in front of angular target speed as you can see this little square is everywhere and every, everywhere you see it you can keyframe keyframe it now scrub to frame 140, lower angular speed to zero, zero, and you see the square is now yellow, which means it uh, there is an animation track on this value, but there is no keyframe at frame 140. So let's add one. Control click. Scrub back to frame zero and if we have done this right now the vehicle the C4D box will start out with pretty nice speed and then at frame 100 it will start to slow down and come to complete stop at frame 140 so let's press play looks pretty okay So that's it for stage one. See you at uh, stage two.